Hello y'all, this is Kaiser Redux, a Hearts of Iron 4 mod that acts as an unofficial standalone expansion for the Kaiser Reich mod, a mod set in a world where the Central Powers won World War I. With that out of the way, this video is going to serve as part one of a playthrough series focusing on the Kingdom of Poland. We have started and right off the bat we're doing a national focus called the Great Debate, which takes a while, 210 days to be exact. And besides that, we have three national spirits, and they are Despised Regency, German Industrial Dominance, and Austrian German Squabbles. We're also a puppet of Germany, I think. Let me check here. We're part of the Reichspact because of that. Are we a puppet? Maybe. Yes, we are. And at this time, the country is ruled by a Regency Council, I think this, that is what this says, and if translated from Polish. And the ruling ideology of the country is social conservative. And let's go to our research slots and start doing basic machine tools, just opening stuff you do in Hearts of Iron 4, Construction 1, and Electronic Mechanical Engineering, which we have a research buff for because I guess we're part of the Kaiser Wilhelm research society and let's get our divisions assigned to an army get that all done there we are do we have a marshal we do yes let's get Joseph Pudilski to lead our military then and the situation of Poland in 1936 until the end of the Weltkrieg which is World War I in this universe there was no Poland what had been Polish territory what had been Polish territory had been carved up between Austria Russia and Prussia at the end of the 18th century and in the face of scattered uprisings throughout the 19th, throughout the 19th century, those three nations continued to hold on to their Polish ter territory. Polish fortunes turned in 1916, though, with the Act of November 5th, where it was granted autonomy from the collapsing Russia. However, however, this triumph came with a bitter taste, as the election of a Polish king was postponed again and again. Between 1921 and 1936, as Austria-Hungary and Germany squabbled about the nationality, the nationality of a possible king and the exact status of a Polish kingdom. This has resulted in Poland becoming a weak constitutional monarchy in all but name, with the Regency Council serving as a mere rubber stamp for the decision made by the elected royal Shiam of the Kingdom of Poland. With the popularity of the Regency at an all-time low and an uncertain economic situation on the horizon, Many asked themselves, what next? But in such dark times, the brave people of Poland can take pride in their history of survival throughout the adversity and say, I don't know how to say that. I'm not going to bother. Just probably some inspiring words. And Poland in this universe, it's basically not as large as it would be at this point in 1936 in our world because the great debate continues. Okay, I'll get back to what I was saying earlier in a little bit. Initially established at the end of the Weltkrieg in order to choose the next King of Poland, the Regency Council is now merely a symbolic institution. Constant distractions, debates, and general inefficiencies have prevented the Council from doing anything of note for far too long and have left, have left Poland without a real head of state for years. Even now, debate continues in the Council over meaningless topics and observers have little hope that any meaningful decisions will be made in the next few years. Unfortunate. And anyway, Poland's smaller than... It, normally would be at this point in our timeline because obviously Krakow, Krakow, whatever the name of it is, is controlled by Felicia Lodomeria, which is a puppet of the Austrians. It's part of the Austrian Empire, that sphere of influence essentially. Then we have places like Posan and Danzig, they're controlled by the Germans. Like they have West Prussia, they have tons of area like Silesia, they have a lot of places under their control. We do got Warsaw though, and a few other cities, which isn't too bad, I will say. Free civilian factories, let's build some, build something here. Build civilian factories, no divisions and basic training, let's change that, get some infantry recruited at a time. Let's go to our logistics, we need more guns, don't we? More equipment, yeah. Edward VIII is crowned the King of Great Britain, his father died, and it will take us some time to get enough weapons to fully arm our military. I'll just focus on reinforcements for now with weapons production and that's going to be what we're doing at this moment also we have a decision telling us to ease up conscription even though we just started so that's rough we're gonna to have to go down from limited conscription to volunteer only and I guess we had to do that because we're at peace or something 
Afghanistan declared war on the Dominion of Delhi. The fourth Anglo-Afghanistan Afghan war started. The Great Berlin stock market crash has occurred. Black Monday is here. Black Monday hits Poland. Black Monday is obviously bad for us because we're part of the German economy, essentially. We're in that sphere. The effects of Black Monday are spreading throughout the economic world, and Poland is not immune to this disaster. Although economically isolated from most of Europe due to her political situation, Poland's economy still relies heavily on German trading. News of this economic disaster has caused a run on banks across the nation, and people are already demanding that the impotent government takes action. We can only hope to survive the coming storm. Let us hope our economy survives, and will now have a national spirit called Effects of Black Monday. Cerulians are elected in France. That has happened over in French territory, with well, the commune of France's territory. There are two Frances. The economy fails. Oh, great. Following the recent economic turbulence in the German Empire, our nation, which is heavily dependent on them in matters of the economy, is rippled. Our farmers are making no money due to the large decrease in prices of agricultural products and factories are preparing to fire thousands of workers. It seems that this year will be hard for the Polish people, both in the cities and in the countryside. While what is more infuriating for the common folk is that the Regency Council is seemingly ignoring the fire they had a hand in lighting. The shim, 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 however you say it, they need to take a, take a drastic countermeasure, need to take drastic countermeasures or our nation and government risk suffering a total collapse. And let's pressure the Regency to finally do something and we'll lose some stability from taking that decision. But we're well, making that choice anyway. And the alternative was that Poland could have gone from a kingdom to a republic. But we're not going to do that. We're going to keep looking for our true king. And German monopolies crash. It just goes from bad to worse, doesn't it? In the wake of Germany's quick economic meltdown, many of the rail and mineral monopolies that have been feeding off of Polish land have found themselves bankrupt. With Germany in complete disarray, now it seemed like our best opportunity to seize their holdings and throw off Germany's economic stranglehold on Poland. And let's capture that. Yeah, let's get that there. And we'll remove the German industrial dominance national spirit from there. I mean, that wasn't bad for worse, but it is sort of a victory for Poland in terms of gaining more autonomy, at least economic autonomy. And there's some wars in China. The warlords are clashing with one another. Icelandic independence has occurred. They're breaking off from Denmark. And, okay, let's go to logistics again. We're slowly getting enough equipment for our military, but we need... What can we do here? I don't know. We just need to make more guns. It would take some time to get the amount we need. Let's go ahead and move our divisions all to the death of Pius XI. Has occurred. Let's move all of our divisions to Galicia, Lodomeria. Don't use the Ukrainian's border. Don't set up there. Don't set up using the Ukrainian's border. Don't do that. Just Poland itself. Bombing in Warsaw. A tragedy has befallen Warsaw. Yesterday, over 50 people were killed and approximately 200 injured in a deadly train bombing at the Warsaw West Station. The police are currently in the middle of investigation on who the culprits might be, but all the available clues point to a fringe anarchist group, fringe anarchist group known as the Polish Underground Anarchist Party. The assumed motive is vengeance against what they deem corrupt and decadent bourgeoisie that have nothing, that does nothing when the people are oppressed and suffer. A horrendous day, and we'll lose a lot of political power from that. Let's move these units here, get that done. And can I actually, okay, ease up the description. We will do that for now. Actually, we'll only do it when we get closer to the date of the, of the countdown here. I just want to maximize how much manpower we get from having a, these, well, a more powerful conscription law than volunteers only. I'm going to miss having limited conscription. It will go down from 250 to 150, which is a difference. That is going to be rough. And we're in negative stability at this time, as well as negative political power. We don't even gain any positive, we don't even gain any additional political power due to our focus. And how's that going? 76 days in now. Pius XII is elected as a new pope. And that's occurred. Let me see that down here, Italian Federation. You have Pius XII. He has a non-aggression pact with the Swiss Confederation, I noticed. And the march on Mycenaeus. What's this about? A major figure in the camp of Great Poland, Tadas Balaki, has mobilized his branch of the organization's youth wing 
and decided to march through Poland. The manifestation ended in a bloody skirmish outside the town of Mysolinski, where members of the Patriots tried to forcefully disarm local syndicalist agitators. Of course, the whole situation got even worse when the local police got involved and a serious gunfight broke out. Send in the army and arrest everyone involved. And we'll lose more political power from that. That is brutal. And we have some political problems right now in the country domestically because of the effects of Black Monday and just due to just due to how long the council is taking to get anything done. Now we have at this point nearly a hundred days left. We still have almost it's gonna be how to say half of nineteen thirty six is gonna I think about half or slightly more than half of nineteen thirty six will be spent just having this great debate over who should be the king of Poland. And Tibet has joined a Mongolian alliance and obviously that's a faction led by Mongolia, which is the Mongolian Khanate at this time. It's led by Roman von Arngern Sternberg, who I think got injured a little bit. He has a bandage over his head. And now they have to bet on their side and their faction. That is happening. Well, that happened. And how's the Anglo-Afghan War doing? We see, I don't know, it's not really going too well for the for Afghanistan. They're holding their lines, but they're not really... I mean, they lost some provinces... The council is distracted again. Despite the recent the recent tragedy in Warsaw, the Regency seems to pay no attention to the daily happenings in our nation. The latest hotly debate topic inside the council chambers is the issue of the next king's height. While some of the members argue that he must be roughly equal to previous rulers so that the converting the statue size will not bankrupt us, others think that only the tallest of can candidates is worthy of the glorious throne of Poland. No matter the stance of an average citizen about the disputed matter, everyone can agree that this won't bring the election of a new king any closer. And let's say the country is drowned by extremists and they are doing this. Reprimand them and we'll lose some political power from that event. I wonder if the alternative would have led to some kind of, I don't know, if it made a difference in our decision. If it would affect us down the line, anyway. And what else is going on? All I can do is pay attention to conflicts. Republicans win the Greek referendum. And there seems to be a border. Kornilov storms Moscow. That's going on. Their president got assassinated. And there seems to be a border conflict between Kamikia, Kamikia the Kamik Khanate, and Russia. That's happening. The First International Congress. I'm just looking around for conflicts. Afghanistan. There's Anglo-Afghan war there. Then there's a lot of fighting in China. Especially in, well, mainly just eastern China around Nanjing. And cities like that, it's the Nanjing clique versus the, who is it, the left Kuomintang, as well as the, okay, general unrest among the farmers. Since our national exports have fallen, our economy is so weak that it cannot support production. Prices are plummeting and thousands of peasants are demanding the government do something about the economic crisis. Peasants, peasant unrest has spilled out into the cities and resulted in many violent incidents. Meanwhile, the police reports that they are having a hard time keeping peace in the entirety of the country. Can this get any worse? Probably. Considering how these events have gone, it just gets worse, doesn't it? And what's this about? Conscription law? Oh yeah, I gotta fix that. So I'm gonna wait till like 10 days or left to do that. I, need, I just don't need to forget about it. Otherwise, we'll get a debuff. That will give us what? I don't want to know if I don't hit it. We'll get some kind of bad thing to happen if we don't demobilize at a certain date, I think. And what is going on in France? The Israelians have transformed the Commune of France into the French National Workers' State. Okay, then. They're doing that. How's the Union of Britain doing? They seem to be... I don't even know what path that is. They are feminist syndicalism. Malta secures independence. Okay. Good for Malta, I guess, as a blow to the German Empire, though. Basic machine tools is done. Now let's do concentrated industry one, get that focus, I mean, that research started. And let's go, the left Kimantang declared war in the end. Qing, 10 days, we gotta wait. We still gotta wait a few more days. How are we doing with this focus? We're halfway, more than halfway through with the great debate of desk and chairs. With the tensions rising all over the country and the situation looking more dire with each passing day, the Regency Council found a new pressing problem they need to attend to. It goes like this. A certain learned man once thought... It, it, let me say that again. A certain learned man once thought 
is a large chair and desk space necessary to improve your cognitive abilities? A very interesting conundrum. If we look at the fact that this issue, oh my goodness, this issue has managed to split the council in two factions, the so-called deskophiles and the deskophobes. Which side are you on, deskophile or deskophobe? Anyway, the former advocates for an increase in workspace and a large and comfortable chair, while the latter thinks there is no change needed. Obviously, the news of those talks didn't go over well with the average folks who suffer from the ongoing crisis. The Regency has already received over a thousand letters threatening to, okay, mess with their chamber if they won't stop their, child, their childish behavior. And let's say for this event, no more desk. You will sit on the floor until you get to work. Please do something. And we're getting to now almost 300 negative manpower. We're, at, we're getting close, awfully close to it. I do enjoy reading the strange events the Regency Council doing with the have, that have to do with the Regency Council because they it just goes to show they're not really doing a very good job at finding a king of Poland. And the Great Debate has about less than 60 days, maybe, or no, I mean, whatever. The Council regains focus with the new bodyguards dispatched to the Regency Council's chamber by the Shiem. Its new members have finally started to feel a certain unease. The bodyguards, acting as representatives, the Shiam explained the past month's events to the chamber, and the council soon after made a bold and, a, and unexpected choice to set out on their final debate on who shall become the new king of Poland. Perhaps this nation can finally have the monarch they have so desperately wanted all these years at last. And we're making progress, and we've got 50 political power from that. And now we're closer to minus 200 political power instead of minus 300, which is a slight improvement, even though things are still not looking so great. And why is there a demilitarized region in Russia? I'm a little concerned about that. I mean, I'm just paying attention to it. It's happening. And what is this about? Lithuanians in the Commonwealth. What is this? Malta, Malta join the Reichs Pact, okay? With the Regency Council hard at work for the first time in its existence, we have received, we have received a very surprising offer from our former partners. The Lithuanians have declared a renew, renewed interest in recreating the Commonwealth and as such have reached out to us to, go, to negotiate. The Commonwealth was once a major power in Europe, but it was eroded by the flawed noble democracy and the Shrachia having too many privileges and too much power compared to the king and the common people. Those reasons are exactly why some inside the council are warning us against pursuing a utopian idea of a reborn union between our nations. We can either accept the Lithuanian proposal or proceed with the elections as planned. What shall we do? And let's proceed with the election. Get that over with. And we'll have the royal election take place. We're not going to be remaking the PLC. No Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth here, which is a sad day for the Lithuanians who proposed the idea in the first place, I guess. And the Republic of Kokan declared war in the county of Kiva. There's a, that's basically while well, they're fighting for control of Central Asia, I guess. And the Union Nationale Nationalista has achieved the Italian majority. It's Benito Mussolini. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Benito Mussolini, Southern Italy, coup d'etat in Siam. So we have Mussolini. We have the totalist national syndicalism in Italy. Well, the Socialist Republic of Italy, the Italian national social state. And there is the, Fran the French National Workers State, who is Cerulean, Cerulean's white son over China. Then we have the Union of Britain, who is feminist, syndicalist. So that is the makeup of the Third International Faction at this point. Very interesting views there. And we had to elect a king. Okay, this is going to be a very big event for us. The, mom the momentous occasion is finally upon us. For 20 years, the people of Poland have waited for a Regency Council to make a decision who is fit to lead our nation into the future. With the Shiam pushing the Council along in recent months, the moment came sooner than many anticip anti anti what I'm saying, anticipated. There's only one question remaining as of now. Before the members of the Regency Council announce their verdict, who shall be crowned as the new ruler of the Kingdom of Poland? Now let's go with Paul Salvatore, and that event that Choi says, Paul Salvatore is the rightful descendant of the Piast, and will take Poland into modernity. Done. Join the Middle Europa. I guess, what happened? Did we leave Middle Europa? Okay, we did then. But Paul, how to say, now we have a King of Poland who is a social democrat 
and well, the Democratic Socialist variety. And he is the mad piest. He is historically he was well, he has the leader trait. Paul, his name is Paul the First Salvatore the Mad Piest, and he has a bio about him. But historically, Paul Salvatore Ridelski Piest was a man who claimed to be descended from the Piest dynasty, the first historical ruling dynasty of Poland, whose rule had ended in the Middle Ages in 1370. While initially his aims were to get himself on a Polish throne, after the end of World War I, he came to support the idea of Poland as an independent republic. Ultimately, he never achieved his real-life ambitions of leading the Polish people and died in 1944. But obviously, here in Kaiser Redux, he is a candidate to, to become the king of Poland. And here he is right now. And what does his leader trade even do? Consumer goods factories, minus 5%. Research speed, plus 5%. And stability, minus 5%. And we're not even in a faction anymore. So I guess we don't have to worry about being a puppet of the Germans at this point. And in our national focus tree, let's go with a true, a true Piest. In a shocking turn of events, a man claiming to be the descendant of the Piest family was elected as the King of Poland. The whole nation now watches in uncertain anticipation of what the reign of the Mad King will bring. And Poland elects a new king. Okay, let's. Well, that's a world event. For almost two two decades. The Polish throne has remained empty after the end of the Velkry, a Regency Council was convened to elect a new Polish king. However, a constant interference and, in and ineptitude has prevented the council from selecting a king for all these years. But now, after many, year after many weeks of intense debate inside the chambers of the Polish Regency Council, the, attention the decision was finally made to elect a new monarch to the long vacant Polish throne. The coronation of Perwil, it's Paul, well, I think. Well, whatever. The coronation of Paul I Salvatore was held was held in the palace at Warsaw early in the morning and has been followed by parades and celebration throughout the nation. It remains to be seen rather the new king, whether or not the new king can navigate the small Polish nation through the coming storms. And let's go ahead and move all of our divisions to Germany with a border with the Reichspakt countries of Germany and with Lithuania. We have no more allies to turn to at this time. And Germany abandons Poland in the wake of the Black Monday crisis that has crippled the German nation. The German protectorate of Poland has slipped away. This to many was a long time coming, long time coming, as the German influence in the state had been waning for some time. However, the recent events were the final straw. Paolo the first, Paolo the first, Salvatore, Salvatore officially declared full independence from Germany earlier to, earlier today, something that has largely gone unnoticed ab abroad. However, Germany has decided not to take action seen to focus on German domestic issues over Poland, and it was not worth it. And from that focus, from that event, we got 100, 100 political power. Death of T.G. Masaryk, that's in Bohemia. Research slot available. Let's research Excavation 1. And how are we doing with equipment now? We're still in a deficit for guns. That's not good. The Poisson Treaty has been signed. That's something to do with China, I think. And a true PS will be done in about 20 days. And from this event, from this focus, we'll, let's see, besides the focus text, which I read earlier, we'll get 100 political power, the despised regency and Austrian-German squabbles, national spirits will disappear, and the Austrian Empire and the German Empire will start hating our country due to its government. I mean, I guess they don't like the Mad Piest as, as the country's king. But here we are. And I'm just waiting for this focus to get done. Come on, any day now. It's going to be so weird being so isolated in Central Europe. I wish we did. We could get allies later on in the future, but for right now, it's just we can't see what's going on in many places. The 1936 Vienna Summer Olympics have occurred. The left Kuomintang was annexed by the Nanjing clique, and that's over in China, in East China. A true PS question mark is going to be done now, and in a focus tree, we can do invite a new, well, I mean, write a new constitution, or reform the monarchy. And a very interesting thing about a true PS, this path we're going down, is that the this path does not allow you to go down the absolute monarchist route at all. You can't do it. You're just not allowed to. And what can we do here? What can we choose? I gotta pick one of these. Let's go with reform the monarchy. That will take 56 days and it reads, nation stands fractured and weak by reforming the monarchy and reducing the power of the king. We stand to bring the nation into the modern era. And from that focus, we'll get 200 political power, 
which will put us back into the range of no longer be, how to say this, we're no longer being the negative political power zone, which is not fun to be in, to be honest. And we are now gaining political power a day instead of losing it constantly because those national spirits that were causing it to be lost is gone. There's some event about a book. What's going on in the world? Not much. The Ran Rebellion succeeds. What's that about? Huh. What's this? Oh, it's the... That's the South African People's Union. Okay, it's being led by David Ivan Jones. Nikumal Kane declared war on Xinjiang clique. Jan Shremek is elected governor of Bohemia. A Catholic priest in power over Bohemia. Incredible. Interesting. And how's this focus doing? We have about 30 days or less now left at this point. And all we can do is wait. We're just focused on doing our initial focuses on our path. And after this, I guess we can do other stuff. Oh, actually, we could do some things relating to joining the international community. I need to probably find allies. That would be a good idea. And I'm going to do reform monarchy and a handful of other things. Handful of other things before I go down this path here. Well, do that part of focus tree that will let us find some allies. I would like to just improve the nation domestically for a short little while by doing like five more focuses over here. Then we'll start looking around more internationally to see what we can do. And Jabal Shamar declared war Nijd. That has happened. And who can we even join as factions? We have the Austrians. We can align ourselves with them. The Reichspakt. Bulgarian Declaration of Independence. Okay. Poland's own way. Poland's part in the revolution. We can't really go down that path because of our ruling ideology. An ally. The bear. So we have the Reichspakt. The Entente. Austria and Russia. Essentially, that's who we can turn to, or who we can ally with. East Turkestan declared one to Kumal, Kumal Khanate. That's going on in China. Belgium joined the Reichspakt. Okay, then. So let me check on Belgium. Flanders Wallonia is dead, I suppose. Yeah, it is dead. But Belgium is part of the Reichspakt. It's being led by the Belgian Parliament at this time. Reform the monarchy is nearly finished. And I guess after this, we'll do maybe... I don't know. We'll do write a new constitution next. And then the people's king. Get write a new constitution done. That will take about 56 days. That's all right. How are we doing with soldiers? Let's make sure we constantly train a new division all the time. And how's equipment looking? We're in the positive now. So let me start training another division instead of just one at a time. Coup d'etat in Algiers. Military high command focus. Let's go with, what can we do here? Let's use maybe, I don't know. Let's think here. Xinjiang Click declared war. Okay, Mongol Khan is going to be involved in some fighting over in Asia then. Let's go with Tenacious Defense. And for a military high command focus, Army High Command Logistics, that will be done. And what's this about here? Navy related stuff for the Officer Corps. I'm not worried about a Navy command too much as Poland at this time because. As you may notice, we don't control any ports whatsoever, so a Navy command is not really relevant to our current geographical situation. We just need more army divisions, though. We don't even have enough units to cover our entire border with Germany, and that's not good in the, in the event of a war with any of our neighbors. And hopefully, getting more units trained will just build up a large enough force to, at the very, at the bare minimum, just defend. Poland's territory in case of wars. And what's going on here? Let's look around. Oh, Nijd and Jabal Shamar are fighting. Afghanistan is doing really well. They haven't gotten close to Delhi at all, but they are pushing into the Dominion of Delhi. 20th anniversary of Polish independence. There is the celebration. There is ce celebration around the nation today as citizens of the Kingdom of Poland celebrate 20 years of independence. The Kingdom of Poland was officially created for the signing of the Act of November 5th, which forged this new Polish which forged a new Polish state from the ashes of a failing Russia. Here's the 20 more years. There's 10 political power. That's a flavor event, isn't it? And flavor events are essentially little events that tell you about a country specific, a specific country or specific event about, I don't know, something relating to the country, but you don't usually get more, much benefit from them. They're just political power that gives you more explanation on stuff. Alf Landon is elected president of the USA, and we'll see how that turns out. Usually they have a civil war in Kaiser Redux. Spoilers there, but it happens nearly every playthrough. 
in this mod. They can actually avoid the war, but I doubt that's going to happen, because that's very rare to see overall. And East Turkestan declared war on the Kumal Khanate, and we just got done researching Concentrated Industry 1. Maybe eventually at some point in the future we will get an, an additional research slot because having three research slots is not so bad, but having four would be better. And let's research interwar artillery, and that's going to be started now. Everything's just kind of, we're just existing in Poland for right now. We're just building up the country, consolidating the king's control essentially, but just more doing some reforms, I guess. And once this write a new constitution event is done, we'll get an event as well as a bunch of political power, which I'm wondering what the event's going to say, but we'll see once it gets here. How is everything going in Asia? It is, wow, very big front there. Tibet is fighting. Who are they fighting? They're fighting. A new constitution is done. After the king, Paolo I, promised sweeping reforms, we now have to think about the reforms, what the, what the reforms should actually in, entail. Focus on economic, economic growth, empowering the military, political power, focus on the United Nation. I'd say base stability will be good. Pretty good bonus. It's going to last a lot longer than a one-time research bonus. Admiral Kochak is murdered in transit Emmer, and the East Siberian Federation is a thing at this point. And going back to Asia, well, China to be more specific, the Andrews are victorious in Brazil. Tibet is fighting the, exp the expansion of Polsky Radio SA. Got some political power from that event. But Tibet is facing off against the Xinjiang clique, as well as the Ma clique with the Mongol incarnate. And they're trying to sandwich those two countries, I guess. And what else is here? The Kumal Khanate did join the Mongolian alliance. It doesn't really matter, though, because it looks like their country is soon to be completely forced to surrender once they lose their capital of Kumal, which, yet yeah, the Kumal Khanate is based out of Kumal. Not very surprising. No national focus set. Let's do a People's King. And this uh, this focus, the People's King, August then the first, or the People's King, as he is becoming known, serves as a unifying force. Okay, actually, that's a different... That refers to a different king. Fake news about the People's King. Anyway, this focus will give us a little bit of political power, 50 political power, and it will also give us a national spirit called the People's King, which will grant higher division attack on core territory and higher division defense on core territory. And buffs like that are always important in wars, especially defensive ones. Unassigned divisions, some new divisions have been deployed. Well, one new division, assign them to our army. Modify officer core. Actually, no. Let's go to our... What can we do here? Go to partial mobilization, get that done. Export focus. How are we doing with exports? The death of Josip Pudilski has taken place, and he was our marshal who was leading our forces, so he has passed away now. Josip Beck follows, promises to follow Pudilski. Curious. He was an associate of the late Marshal of Poland. Okay. Research slot available. Instruction 2. Let's start that. Modify government. Let's do... What can we do? Military staff. Military staff. There's a lot of choices here. And besides the more generic ones, we do have many options for chief of staff that are like historical figures. And let's go with maybe fire support. We'll do... I don't know, I gotta think here. Mass combat. Who can we get? The Black Tsar, oh wow. Having ruled Russia for over a year, many Rangel's inner circle believed he should restore the Tsardom of Russia. Accepting this advice, Peter Rangel was crowned Tsar of the restored Russian Empire. While this comes as a surprise to many, others would believe this was always in Rangel's plans since the beginning. True or not, there is no denying the new Tsar's authority in Russia. So, Russia gets a very different kind of czar, and meanwhile, Poland, well, now with this, oh my goodness, the Cuban People's Republics, the Cuban People's Republic is finally the Georgian Socialist State now, which is led by Pol well, Stalin, it's Stalin, yeah, well, with his Georgian name. No national focus is set, let's get started on a clear line of succession. Poland's 20 years of weakness were caused by the lack of a strong king to lead the nation. We must reform our laws by reform our laws of succession so that there will always be a king of Poland and that a regency council will never again hold sway 
over the nation's future. And from this focus, we'll get 25 political power and gain 10% base stability. Once this focus is done, we're gonna go ahead and do, say, citizen's rights, and after that, the new, the new shim, shim, jin, sin, I don't know how you say it, and modify government. What can we do? Military staff, I never did get a chief of staff, didn't I? Okay, chief of staff, who do we get? Fire support? I mean, these, these guys do the same thing. We have two guys that do the same thing. They cost the same, their effects are basically the same, whatever. Who else is available? We have three guys that all do the same thing, don't we? Why is the School of Fire Support so popular in Poland? Why do you love artillery so much? I know it's cool, it makes the bang bang noise. My goodness, I guess he looks coolest. Let's go with Carol, Carl here. Get him as the chief of staff and that will help us produce artillery better. And I'm gonna focus probably on superior firepower as Poland. And let's unpause here. That's done. Now, at least we'll get a chief of the army very soon. And we have plenty of real life people here. Get the same guy we have for the chief of staff as the chief of army, who calls higher division attack stats overall. It's a good thing. And I think Alexander II was crowned as the king of Serbia, I believe. Yeah, there is Alexander II. He's there now. I'm just waiting for more wars to happen. And how is the Cuban People's Republic doing? They are fighting on, like, what, three different provinces? Yeah, I don't see a very fast war going on there between those two countries, just due to how wide the front is. The Guangxi military clique, I mean, military government just got annexed. We've got a new division deployed. Good. I need to get a new field marshal here, don't we? Don't I? Yes. So let's get this guy here. There we are. He has the highest stats, the highest level. And I need the best commanders possible leading the troops of Poland. They better lead the troops of Poland anyway. What's happened here? Standoff in America. American Civil War inbound. Calling it now. And let's start training at least one unit of Brigade of Cavalry. Russia announced her, ham her ambitions. And Russia's probably going to go on the offensive at this point. Frankly, I expect them to. And Liberia joined the 3rd International. That did happen. Okay, then. I'm just waiting to get a clear line of succession done. And honestly, I'm thinking more and more about joining Russia in a faction. Raising Modlin Fortress. With the recent increase in tensions, our military is reviewing old fortresses for renewed service. One of the contenders is the Modlin Fortress, a massive Fortification on the confluence of the Naru and Fustula River near Warsaw, constructed by Napoleon in 1806 as a key fortification in his campaign against Russia and later used by the Russians themselves. The fortress, nevertheless, still commands an important strategic position on the in the region. Should we renovate the fortress? Yes. And this will give us two land forts in the province, one well, a province in Warsaw. And we needed to do that. The alternative was we didn't do anything, and we'd get point political power from that. And I think the fort is right here. I think that's where it's at. It's the only place where I can see forts. Actually, no, it's in Warsaw. So where is it? Okay, it's right here? Or no? Yes? No? 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 Where's the fort at, then? I'm confused. Whatever. Fort somewhere. All I see is a land fort. Land fort right here. Just defend it in case we get invaded. That's all I can say. Also, hold hold the river at all costs, because we got to make the enemy fight across the river. That would be good for us. And did we ever demobilize our conscription? I mean, change our conscription? I guess the game did it for us. Never mind. These one new one new infantry divisions are going to be deployed. All right then. Or I guess we don't need to do limited conscription. We don't got to change it anymore. The combined syndicates of America declared war. The Second American Civil War officially begins. How surprising! I know. That's going on now. I guess I can check in on that from time to time. Be a spectator to all the events of that conflict. And let's research Concentrated Industry 2. Get that started, Modify Officer Corps. What can we get here? Artillery High Command. A clear line of succession is done. Clear line, of, yeah, clear line of succession is done. Now let's do Citizens' Rights. Drafting a new set of laws to empower the citizens of the nation will result in a more educated, loyal, and productive population. And from this focus, we'll get 10% base stability. We'll gain, yeah, we'll gain that. 
and also a national spirit that will give us a higher recruitable population. Research slot available. Let's research what can we research. Let's get improved machine tools because production efficiency caps being higher is always a good thing and hard spire and four. And what do we need right now? We need some more artillery. One division has been deployed. Good. We need definitely need some more cavalry in the future. That would be ideal. We're going to use them as budget motorized and the Russian Liberation Committee has joined the Reich's Pact. Yeah, I didn't point that out point that out earlier, but the Russian Liberation Committee, oh no, it's Andrew Fosov. Okay then, so he joined the Reich's Pact. And is he who else is is anyone else in the caucus in that faction? Guess not. No. They are not. And the Guangzhou federal government is proclaimed. Didn't they just die earlier? Did they just pop back up? I'm not sure. Okay, whatever. I'm confused. Warlord era China confuses me sometimes. And speaking of... Well, not speaking of that, but let's go to Afghanistan now, who is advancing on Delhi. Where they're losing ground. Well, they gained a lot of ground, but they're... I don't know. They have encircled some troops. They have not been able to advance out of this province, to, this state too much. Peshawar did lose some ground there. But they're also pushing back the Dominion of Delhi, which is very fascinating to see. Modify Officer Corps. What can we do? Air High Command. Air High Command. Air High Command focus. Logistics, okay. And can we do anything with our army right now? Yes, we are. Let's do flexible organization or aggressive reconnaissance, reserve officers. Let's just do res reserve officers for now just so we can get our units deployed faster because the training time will not be as long as it was before. Now, at this point, we just need to make more guns at a faster speed. We need more military factories also. Do we have a focus branch for that, I wonder? Maybe we do. Air Force. What is this here? The new Central Industrial Region. Yeah, we can get more factories from a part of our focus tree. I'll keep that in mind. And what's this over here? Defensive tactics. Okay, so these are national spirits, basically. Defensive or offensive. And what can we do with Russia? Once, if we try to ally them, we can ally them and give some artillery designs. Okay then. Expansion of Posky Radio. SA, we get 20 political power from that. We're just looking at what we can do with different factions, depending on who we side with. Staking an east, eastward claim. Okay. The people march for. I don't know what we can do there. I'm just looking around at things. Citizens' rights is done. Now let's do, what can we do? Let's do, go over here again. Let's now start the Nushim, the parliament or whatever. The parliament, well, she, I don't know what, the, what it translates to, what it translates to in English. The Austrian Empire declared war on the Kingdom of Hungary. The Shiem had crisis on the Danube, all right then. The Shiem has remained unchanged since the nation's resurrection at the end of the Weltkrieg. There are numerous loopholes and inefficiencies that could be rectified by reconstitution, reconstitutioning Shiam and would benefit the nation greatly. And from this we'll gain, well, we'll get a national spirit, which says daily political power costs minus 20%. 20%. All right, then. Can we justify on you guys? No, we can't. we got to wait to fight Poland, I suppose. What did I do now? I moved the armies around. Don't do that. I need things to be easier to find. Okay, so let's move all of our units down to the border with Galicia, Lodomeria just to keep a close eye on what's going on in Austria. Queen Wilhelmina abdicates the Dutch throne. All right, then. I really wish we could help the Hungarians. If they ask us to help them, I'll join in. Okay, yeah, there we go. Polish on Hungarians, brothers B. Good for a fight and good for a party. Both are valiant, both are lovely. To the south, the Hungarians stand alone against one of the great powers of the Weltkrieg, the Habsburg Empire. Throughout history, Poland and Hungary have been fraternal nations sharing kings, wars, and cultures. In the Middle Ages, the two countries joined in an ill-fated alliance against the Habsburgs. Perhaps history can repeat itself with better outcomes. Shall we aid Hungary and liberate our brethren in Galicia in the process? Yes, for our Hungarian friends. And now we're going to be involved in the fighting. Hungary invites Polish intervention. We have a picture of Polish winged hussars. The Hungarians have agreed to a mutual guarantee of defense and cooperation the term of the war with Austria and open their borders to Polish forces. Let us rush into Galicia and Bohemia and teach these Habsburgs a lesson. The winged hussars arrive. Indeed they will. 
Now let's go ahead and deploy more divisions. We're gonna have a problem having enough equipment. To at least get these divisions out here and deploy all these units. Let's go down to training, just one division now. But let's get ready for the offensive to take place and push hard south. Let's get our commanders a trait. Get this guy, what can we get him? Cavalry expert, no, that's not, we don't have enough command power for that, whatever. Just be aggressive though and push in and help the Hungarians out in the north. So advance, we will. Come on here now, get this done. Oh, come on, I'm doing it with the wrong army. I gotta do it with the whole army group. I mean, it's just one army, but I just wanna have it be more efficient, I guess. Move in now. We gotta take the enemy capital, and that's all we gotta do. Be aggressive in executing this operation as well, because there is a good chance to Hungarian, the Austrians might move in with some troops. Let's cut off their, their support, though. Move in some cavalry to take Krakow, Krakow, whatever, and capture all these areas, prevent any kind of Austrian reinforcements to flow into this part of their realm. We gotta win this war. Sweden joined the Reichs Pact. There's a civil war in Spain. Okay, we're trying. The Austrian Empire. Okay, there's so many events. Spanish Civil War. Austrian Empire is gonna call in Bohemia. Whatever. We just gotta take ground and make sure we block off any 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 more enemy reinforcements from arriving. Just keep advancing, please. Take territory, advance forward, and cut them off from making more advances. Foundation, the Belgrade Pact. Alright then. Keep the enemy tied down. That's all we need to do. All we need to do is take territory and capitulate the enemy here, and I'll get some pressure off of our allies. And let's now stop being so aggressive because there is there is some cost to us doing that. We need equipment desperately. As long as we can just keep them from having any more front lines with our ally, the Chilean Argentina war has started. As long as we just relieve our allies, take some pressure off of them, I'd say we did good. And we have an encircled Austrian armored division as well as a few troops encircled here from Bohemia. Yeah, these are these are encircled troops from the, the Galatian Lodomerian Empire, or the group Galatia Lodomeria as a whole. Just keep them isolated for now, then push on them. Can we advance now? Would we have some okay, Rondon's revolt is taking place. There's some civil war in Brazil, I think. Meanwhile, Argentina's in a war, a lot of chaos at this time. The Regency of Brazil is fighting a bunch of countries. Well, they're breakaway states really. Research slot available. What can we do? Get. Let's now do support weapons one. Get that started. And I'm glad Hungary did revolt against their Polish, I mean their Austrian overlords, so that we can use this as an advantage, a time to grow Poland, per se. But we are losing here for now. We just got to really help out the Austrians here in the north, then maybe focus on the south. I can't get any more units deployed besides that first one. We need to probably start reforming our army while we're, while, we're, while we're involved in this conflict. At the very least, we have encircled some enemy troops here. You gotta destroy these units. Get rid of this one division belonging to Galicia Lodomeria. Get them out of the conflict. We can't advance on Krakow. We can't get there. Let's just stop for now. Just hold your ground. And the Italian Federation declares war on the Italian national state. That is earlier than I would have expected, but wow. A lot of war going on in 1937. Take this province, though. I hope Austria is not defending us so hard or not protecting themselves so much. We need to help our allies, yes. We need to gain. We need to make sure they stay alive. Can we take this province? Oh, we, got, we got to go through their lines, don't we? Yes, yes, we do. And can we take these troops area out here? They should be encircled. They have no... They're cut off from any kind of allies. They're cut off from reinforcements. Move on the enemy capital. Oh, we're going that artillery division. Why does Austria even have a unit that's entirely artillery? Will specialize in specializes in just being artillery. Take the enemy capital, take Krakow, and just help out the Austrians here. We need to get them some, get them some relief. We can maybe move into Bohemia. We just need to beat Austria. That's a big thing. We need the equipment of the Galicia Lodomerians too. That's why we need to focus so hard on beating them. And now they're cut off effectively. Can we move more into Bohemia? I don't know. Move down here though. Take that province. The enemy capital is surrounded. So let's end this here now. Hopefully these units over here will just disappear in a little bit once they get destroyed because they're encircled. Come on, take them out. We're running out of equipment too, I think. In our focus tree, no, we can now do, what can we get here? Let's go with war economy, get that done, that economy wall, modify officer core. Spirit of the army, what can we do? What can we do? Let's go with, I don't know. What can we do here? Go with... I'm looking. 
proper heritage, and this will give us... Okay, it will help with our cavalry. And we only have how many cavalry divisions? Two, which may, that may have been a mistake, but whatever. It gives us some buffs for our division, some divisions that we are using. Okay, let's move into Bohemia now. Try to. We are having some success. We did take the enemy capital. Good. Galicia Lodomeria has capitulated. They're out of the conflict at this point. Take care of these Austrian remnants in what was part of Galicia Lodomeria. We gotta help the Austrians. They've lost Budapest. They have lost Budapest. We gotta help them. We really gotta help them. And now let's do what can we do in our focus tree? Let's complete what? The next war's army. Get that started. We have to do this because they're at war. And it is crucial we make sure the Hungarians stay alive. If they lose, we lose with them. End this these units here. Get rid of them. Take care of them. Get them gone. Just make them disappear. We gotta hold our lines and help out the help out the Bulgarians. I mean Hungarians, not the Bulgarians. And what is the war score? How much do they need to lose? They need 20% or less. Just make sure the enemy doesn't get past Budapest. They have Budapest already, but we need to make sure they don't make any more advances besides that. We gotta also win this war here. Come on. Break through these guys. There's so many divisions here though. Great. We need more guns. Deploy this division now. Even though it's not really ready. It has to get deployed to the front because we need those troops. Being too defensive at this point. Can you guys like... I don't know. We need this territory badly. But at the same time, I don't know. Make a new front line. This army here. And these guys will be set up to try and push into parts of... Parts of Austria. And retake some territory in Bohemia. Take some territory back for Hungary. And take some territory from Bohemia. Ultimately, that's their plan. These guys over here in the west, just ha in the east, have to focus on getting rid of these Austrian divisions that are basically trapped in... Where is this? Sokava? Sokriva? Whatever the name of it is. We just need to make sure the, Bulgari the Hungarians don't lose their war. That would be awful. Let's start building... Re I mean, start building war... What am I saying? Build military factories in Warsaw and places beside it. Come on, in this battle in the east, we need to get it over with. We have so many guns, too. We do have some factory... How, do we have an air force? I don't remember if we... we basically, we have a small air force. Might as well get them in the air, then. Do something to help out the, Aus help out the Austrians. Do air superiority and close air support. That's all we can do in Slovakia at this time in that air region. Gandhi takes power in the Baratia Commune. Okay, are these guys dead yet? Come on, how are you still alive? You should have no supplies coming in now. Encircle this enemy division. Get that done, possibly. My goodness. We can win, but it's a hard uphill battle. At least if we win, we'll get all this territory here in Galicia, Lodomeria. And maybe some puppets in, say, Bohemia. Maybe. We just gotta win this conflict first. We gotta focus the rest of our military in the west. If we just win here, come on. George, George Falaise has been laid the rest. I was the leader of Cerulean France. He's dead now. Can we break through their lines? What are you doing? We're just keeping them busy. We're doing our best to keep them occupied. We need to make sure the Austrians don't win this war against Hungary. We don't have many guns, though. We're running low on that. We don't have any allies, also. That is bad. Sovereignist, dominate Middle Africa. Okay, not sure what sovereignists are. I didn't really read that event in detail, but that happened. Come on, now. We're gonna have to start moving some more troops in to help out the... Austrians, don't we? We may have to do that. Break through here. Use force attack. I don't care. Do something. What can the field marshal do? Give him a trait. Give him Serbia declared war and is already in Bulgaria. Can we give you a trait yet? No, we can't. We don't have enough political power for that. Fourth Balkan War has started. Win this battle. Get this over with. How do I keep having troops here? Come on. Break. Just break down. You have no more equipment. Lose. My goodness. How annoying. We just don't have enough guns. That's a problem. Such a bad problem. Break these enemies here. Just get them out. Get them gone. We need to move all these units to the west. I mean, the east. Are we making any progress here? I don't know. Are we? Slightly. Not much. Maybe we should just generally hold down the lines of the Hungarians. If they go down, it is a brutal blow to us as a whole as well. I'd probably just do that. And that may, be, that may result in us just being more defensive overall. Can these guys just disappear? You have so many divisions here. Why are they not counted as encircled? Why are these units not encircled? You have no support from anything. Like, come on. We're the ones with low supply here. Meanwhile, you're the ones with no issues whatsoever. That's so annoying. We're just going to give two divisions here. 
Keep two divisions in this area, focus everything else on the east. That's it. I'm not going to do this all day. We have bigger issues to tend to. They can advance outward if they want, but they're just stuck there. And let's research improved infantry equipment one. They're trying to push out. Of course they are. Not surprising at all. And how is Aust I mean, Hungary faring? They are, let me check the war score, at 46%. Okay, we need to be careful then. Let's now research. What can we research? Research what? Import foreign rifles, new Polish rifle. What can we get here? I really need an offensive fighting force. Get new age cavalry researched. That will take 56 days. Okay. And this offensive is really not going anywhere. These guys are keeping, they're trying to break out so badly. Why can't they just be encircled like normal armies would be at this point? Oh no, this is not going to be good for us. I wish the Austrians could just be busy with something else besides just fighting Hungary and us. I may regret joining this war, I will say that. Can we advance here at all? No, they have so many divisions. Okay, so what can we do now? Delete that order. Hold this whole line. Keep two divisions. Hear me, two divisions on the three divisions on the border with these guys. Just to make sure they don't break out or something. And we just got to focus on helping out the Austrian, the Hungarians on a defensive level. And just hope somebody can attack Illyria and the, well, attack Illyria or Austria or some other member of the Empire. We just got to keep them tied down. That's all we can do. Defend, Aust um, defend Hungarian territory. Poland has their back. We just don't have that many divisions right now. They're trying to break out. No surprise there. Oh, well. Keep two divi five divisions over here, then. I don't know. You come on. Declared war in Jabal Shamar. Okay. We just got to defend our allies' lines. That's all we can do. Defend our capital. Hold their capital down. Do something. We only have so many men ourselves. If these guys over here in the east were gone, we could do something. But they aren't technically in circle. Like, look at this. They're trying to break out. It's not really going anywhere, but they're trying. Hold the capital. Hold everything we can. Can we use last stand yet? No, we cannot. Oh, no. Great. They keep trying to break out. Now they're going to fail. Good. Well, at least there's some kind of upside in that now. All I can really hope on at this point is maybe... Maybe Serbia, once they get done with the Bulgarians, will turn to Illyria and fight them, possibly. But for right now, that's really up in the air. And that's, uh, that's going to be a while from now. Nepal declared war. Need a minion of Delhi. Wow, that's ambitious, isn't it? Doctrine's available. Let's research formation flying. And is the, okay. I guess the minion of Delhi. They're still at war with Afghanistan. Now to be inv invaded by Nepal. That's like salt in the wound, isn't it? They're losing to Afghanistan now. Now to get invaded by the Nepalis. That is brutal. We don't have any equipment. Yeah, that's not good. Not good at all. Just hold your ground, though. And just dig in and help the Hungarians where we can and just make sure the enemy doesn't gain that much ground held by... Defend their capital. That's all we can do. Play defensively. Modify government. At this point, what can we do here? Let's do Chief of the Air Force. No. Chief of the Navy. Chief of the Army. I gotta thank here. Decisive Battle Doctrine. Yeah, do that. Suf insufficient resources. Whatever. Doctrine's available. Let's go with Superior Firepower. Go with that Doctrine. Even though we started with Grand Battle Plan. We'll just do that instead. Some research is finished. Okay, get this researched. Hawaii joined the Reichs Pact. Interesting choice. But okay, Norway joined the Moscow Accord. Don't know why, but they did that. Countries, whatever, how country decide, how each country decides which faction they want to join in Kaiser Redux is always interesting. And I'm going to end part one of my Kingdom of Poland playthrough in Kaiser Redux here. If you enjoyed the video, Make sure to like and subscribe. You can check out Kaiser Redux in the video description. The link to the mod is there.